Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video. This video actually is part of a blog hop. Um, I'm using the Simple Plaid from Waffle Flower and then the Rejoice Rabbit uh, stamps and dies. It comes in a combo if you're interested in both of them. So the blog hop actually went up yesterday. The video was not done because I can't do anything in a timely fashion, um, but also because uh, Waffle Flower, it's her sixth birthday, um, which is amazing. I love Nina. She's the owner uh, and super excited that they've, you know, hit their six year mark. Um, I love her for other reasons, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but anyway, so she asked us to list our top six products. And so because my, um, my blog hop <laughs> uh, post was so picture heavy, um, I really only just shared one, uh, maybe two pictures of this particular project. And then I figured maybe I would do like a follow-up post with that, um, more pictures, more explanation, and then the video also, just so it wasn't going on for like eons for those poor people who are blog hopping. Speaking of the blog hop, wait, let's talk about what's happening here in the card. Um, so this, the Simply Plaids uh, background stamps, there's two different stamps in there. This one looks like gingham and I totally love it. Now, I'm gonna tell you that I did this one time already. I did this one time already. That's why the stamp was already on there. Um, and I did it in the mini Misty and there is not enough room to do it in the mini Misty. Like there's just not. Um, so keep that in mind. If you're gonna use a stamp positioner for this, use the, the at least bare minimum, the regular size Misty. Then when I finally did move it over to my big Misty, I went to stamp it and I lined them up incorrectly. So now like you see me here, like trying to pay attention to how I am lining them up. And the only way that I found to do it that I was comfortable with, that I knew I was doing it the right way, was to overlap them. Now I was very nervous about overlapping them because I was worried that I was going to have one line that was a little bit darker than the rest of them. So what I did was I lined it up so that way I knew that it was gonna line up correctly with the overlap and then I wipe like when I inked it up well here <laughs> this was <laughs> it was a it was a card of treasures um here I forgot to put my magnets on so now I'm trying to hold the card in place uh, and stick it to that repositional adhesive that I always have on the back and then line it up yeah it didn't it totally moved so now this time I'm relining it up I remember to put my magnets on and now we're good to go I'm going to ink it up now waffle flower does have ink I don't own any of it um, but I do own lots of W plus nine. So that's actually what I'm using today for the blue. Uh, and this is called Bo Peep. That is the name of the blue. And I just thought like Easter rabbit and pastels and spring and that this would just be like a perfect color background plus gingham. Like stop it. I know it's adorable. Um, so I did just, you saw me with a baby wipe, just wipe off that one line that is overlapped. Um, I did still get some slight overlapping, but I can tell you um, in looking at the final card and, and you'll see it after it's all dry, it was not even noticeable. It totally blended in. It was not even a thing. So thank God for that. But anyway, once I get done stamping the background, I am going to stamp the rabbit who, honestly, I just, as soon as I saw it, like when they were doing the, the release and uh, Nina sent me the photos, um, I was like, I have to have, I have to have this rabbit. I just have to have it. It's so stinking cute with the little crown of flowers and then like the little florals at the bottom. And I love it. And it's not just for Easter. You can use this rabbit for, for anything and I adore it. So anywho, stamping this in Copic Safe ink and then I'm going to do some pastel coloring. For the blog hop, now that we're like four minutes in, right? Um, you can still participate even though we're um, a day late. Uh, and Nina, here's why I love her. I love her <laughs> because so originally she was going to, um, when she reached out to me to be part of the hop, she was also going to have, um, a sale. And then this whole thing happened, this, this whole thing that we're just smack dab in the middle of. And so she sent out another email and she was like, we're not going to do the sale. I don't want to encourage people to impulse buy during this time. Um, you know, if they have the extra money to purchase, great, but I, I don't want people to feel like they need to spend their money on things that are not necessities. Um, and I love her for that. I love her because small businesses are suffering. 
um, during this, you know, this massive shelter in place, um, you know, shutdown. Now all different states are doing it differently. Ohio is a shelter in place. Nina is still shipping. If you decide that there is something that you love and would love to support her, and I would love if you would also like to support her. Um, she is still shipping. She is the only person shipping though. Um, she is, I, I had mentioned before in another one of my videos that there are still several businesses that are um, open and that are shipping from home. Um, and somebody had asked me for a list. I did list it out in those comments, but I will also put up a list on my blog um, because it is, it's important that if we can support them, like Eric and I are in a position where both of us are still working. So our income has not been affected. So it's, I can support other people who maybe are, um, you know, in a, a financial crunch right now. If you are also one of those people who would like to support small business, by all means, do not take food out of your children's mouths. Like, you know what I'm saying. Um, but if you can support them, that'd be great. Waffle Flower is one of them that is, is shipping from home and Nina, the owner, is doing all the shipping herself. Um, so back to this, back to this door. No, we have to still talk about the blog hop. Do we? Yes, we do, because there's giveaways. So she didn't want any, she did not want to, um, encourage anybody to impulse buy, but she is doing lots of giveaways for her sixth birthday. And they're really awesome and amazing. And so if you have not participated in the blog hop, there will be a link below to that post um, for you to, to go over and get involved in that. Um, you know, to, I think you have to leave a comment. Like she picks, she's picking them randomly from comments on all the blog posts. Um, plus there's a ton of inspiration. If you love waffle flour, they have great products. Um, so also, you know, just some inspiration for you guys if you're sitting at home. Uh, I know a lot of us nowadays do um, videos and, and things like that. So some things for you to maybe check out. Now, back to this rabbit. So I thought about, I toyed with the idea of doing a white rabbit. And I figured that is what I would normally go to. That would be my normal go-to is to do a white rabbit in a pastel situation. So I tried to kind of force myself out of my norm and to do a brown rabbit. Now he is a very, he's still in that pastel family. He is not a dark brown rabbit. This is not as bold as I would normally go, um, but I still think he came out totally cute. And I did leave um, the area around his face white. Um, so when I was, you know, blending out this E50 is a super light color. In fact, it's my lightest color when I'm doing a Caucasian skin tone. Um, but it blends very seamlessly into white. And so I did leave that area just around like his muzzle white. I picked other colors that were um, pastel. I do have, it's a, I have a three span um, combination for each one of them, for the pinks, for the yellows, and for the blues. Uh, instead of four, which would normally be my, you know, super dark shadow color, I left those off altogether. Um, and then I'm just going to go through and color like I normally do. Lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. I will tell you that um, doing the coloring for the darkest color, I don't always go back and do this, especially not with a four combination blend. But for this one, I did for all of them. I went back in with the darkest color and added... Um, back in some darker shadows after I was done with the the coloring um, as far as the lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. When I got back to that lightest, I did go back in with the dark um, just to get a little bit more separation. So what has been happening in our neck of the woods? So the last time that we talked, um, Nathan and I had done the rainbow project and that was amazing. Um, and so now here we are, it was Palm Sunday yesterday and we are headed into Holy Week. And so I was trying to, I'm, I'm at a minimum for, <laughs> this is gonna sound so funny, I'm at a minimum for craft supplies. Um, I did place an order with Joanne Fabrics and pick that up curbside. Um, I literally, like I rolled up, I rolled down my passenger side window and I told that poor girl, just throw it in. Just, you just toss it right in the window, honey. There's no reason for us to have to be any kind of close to each other. And she did exactly that. And then she went on her merry way and I went on mine. God bless, God bless you, Joanne Worker. Um, so, um, I, but I, bo I mostly bought fabric. Um, and so I had talked to, I told you, um, a friend of mine who was a respiratory therapist who was looking for um, masks and uh, another crafter, Melanie Hopes, 
Um, she totally, totally, totally came through for me. She sent like 24 masks um, for my friend Cindy and her coworkers in West Virginia. Um, and she was so excited to get them. She got them yesterday and sent me a message. And I'm so thankful for the people who, who are out there and they are churning them out. I don't have a sewing machine. Everything that I have to sew, I sew by hand. And I don't, um, I'm not a, a sewist. I'm not a, that's just not my thing. I have a very loose understanding and reading the masks, like the patterns and stuff was like some of the terms were a little confusing for me. Um, and so I was like, the fastest way for me to get her these things is going to be to reach out to somebody else who's already mass producing them, which is what I did. And that worked. Now, um, I may try my hand at it now that, that I have some fabric and a little, like the, the need isn't so right now, like it was for her. Um, I may try my hand at it. I have not decided yet, uh, whether or not I'm going to do that. So, um, I, Nathan and I were trying to figure out some ways that we could still celebrate and decorate for Easter because um, the point of Easter is not the bunny or the egg hunts or the candy, although that is nice. Don't get me wrong. Um, Mally's. Ooh, Mally's. We're going to be friends after this is over. Uh, get me some chocolate covered Oreos. Yes, ma'am, I am. Uh-huh. Um, but... So I've been seeing on um, Facebook and different places uh, people doing like stained glass um, with their kids at home. And it's basically just painter's tape on the window and some washable paint and they can paint on it and it's creating stained glass windows. So I think that's going to be our next project that Nathan and I are going to do um, to put some decorations for Easter up on the windows. I also saw this super pretty. Um, it's like a branch wreath. Uh, that's a cross um, for your front door. And so I think I would like to do that as well. We have this tree in the front yard that sheds branches like nobody's business. And Eric despises that thing because he'll be out there cleaning up the branches. And then like the next day, there's just more branches. Um, but I'm thinking that this may be a benefit to me because then I can use the branches to maybe make this, this cross. I do have, I mean, I'm a crafty person. You know how we hoard things. Um, so I do have things that I can make do with. Um, so we'll just see, we'll see how that goes. I will keep you updated. If you don't, um, if you don't have an Instagram or you don't follow me on Instagram, I always share, like, as we're in the process of things, um, share those things. Eric teases me all the time when I take a picture of something. He's like, do it for the gram. Um, <laughs> but it's really just about me sharing. And I've had to explain to Peanut, because sometimes he hijacks my phone and takes pictures and then posts them to my Instagram story, uh, which is super cute. Um, but when he does that, he will then ask me, well, how many likes did it get? How many, how many views? How many likes did it get? And so I'm having to explain to him that those things don't matter and they don't matter. So if you are a person who um, is crafty, who has a blog, who has an Instagram, who is sharing, there was one um, like on Stamp Junkies, which is a group that I'm part of and they're, um, they're lovely and they always have wonderful ideas. If you're not a part of that Facebook group, I would recommend it. Um, but in there, um, somebody had asked, like, who are your favorite YouTubers? And um, there was one crafter in particular that had posted on there. And I'm not going to, like, I, this is not to call her out. This is just to bring attention to this particular topic. Um, and said something along the lines of, well, nobody's going to suggest me, so I'll post my own channel. So first things first, um, like, kudos to her for putting her, her channel out there. That's awesome. But I don't like how she put herself down. Um, you know, and she, nobody's going to put mine out there. Well, that's, that's not true. But there is such a thing, if you guys have ever taken any sort of psychology classes, there's such a thing as a self-fulfilling prophecy. And the theory behind that is if you believe that is what will happen, then you basically force your own outcome. So if you believe that nobody likes your YouTube channel well enough to put it out there, um, you make these um, self-deprecating comments and you put out this negativity and then that is what people see and then so in turn they don't want to watch your YouTube channel or share your YouTube channel. See what I'm saying? So don't be down on yourselves. Don't do that. And there, there's so many people who, well, I don't, I don't want to post my card because it's going to look like preschool coloring. 
it, why are you making the card? Are you making the card so that you can be a phenomenal colorist who gets all sorts of accolades and becomes famous and all of a sudden you're walking the red carpet for these magnificent cards that you have made? Because if you are, then you will always be disappointed with the outcome because that is not going to happen. That's not going to happen for any of us. We're never going to red carpet walk for our card making, y'all. That's just not going to be a thing that happens. Um, but if you are making cards for the joy of it, for that purpose that God has given you to make, to create things, to share the information that you have with other people. Whether the card gets a million pats on the back or accolades or, or whatever will not matter. It will have no effect on you uh, because you're making it for the joy of it. And, and I've said this before in my other videos, when you are back back before any back before we ever had this relationship, before people ever tuned into my YouTube channel to listen to me blather on about my life story, <laughs> um, I made scrapbooks and I made cards and I did it in um, you know the spare bedroom at my mom and dad's house. And I did it at my old married house and I did it for years for just the joy of creating. I didn't share it with anybody. There was nobody in my family that wanted to share that with me. Now my middle sister did um, later on get into, we took some crafty classes together and she would take card making ones with me and I would take multimedia ones with her because that's more what she was into, like um, home decor and things like that. Um, and so we kind of met in the middle. But when I first started, there was nobody that I could have that discussion with. There was nobody I could share that with. And so I made them just to make them because it it brought me joy. And giving the card to somebody else brought me joy and brought them joy. And so that was the purpose. So basically, the moral of that story is don't put yourself down for whatever level you're at because we all start somewhere. And if you put that out, that's what you put out into the world is that I'm not good enough attitude, then people will pick up on that. And then you're going to end up with exactly what you think, whether it's true or not. Um, so there's that. But anywho, back to what I was um, saying about um, Stamp Junkies. They're, they're, they're super awesome. I would recommend... Um, joining that group they're they're very encouraging people i have not seen anybody on there be like oh my gosh why'd you post this because your coloring looks like worse than my five-year-olds nobody's doing that it's a it's a kind group um so here back to the card i stamped the sentiment and then i'm going to use that extra paper up top to create a little bit of a um placeholder for my rabbit I've tried the rabbit just on the gingham, and I'm going to be honest, I did not love it. I felt like they were competing. So in order to preserve the pattern, but still break it up, I just used the top part of that A2 sized um, white card um, to act as like a little placeholder. And then I'm going to pop these up on foam, and then I'm going to add some glitter. So I'm super excited about the painting of the windows. I think that that will be fun and the making of the wreath if I can get enough sticks to make that happen. It looks like it's really really full. Um, so I'm going to try to do that. I would be very interested to hear how you guys like if you're crafting or passing the time crafting or if you have some maybe outdoor Easter um, decorations that you have done before. Um, I'm looking for less bunny more Jesus. That's just kind of where I'm at with that. Um, and then obviously, like, I, I am very sad that we will not get our traditional Easter celebration with, you know, having dinner with our family and being all together. But um, Easter is the celebration of, of Jesus um, rising from the dead. And that doesn't change no matter where we're at, whether we're in, in you know, shelter in place, quarantine, um, that, that, um, that truth is is the same and so we will still be celebrating here um, in our household maybe just a little bit of a smaller celebration um, and maybe just a little bit different so um, I will be interested in see I want to know what your I want to know what your Easter celebration is going to be too and then also if you have any decoration tips for outside um, so yeah that's it I'm gonna put some glitter on this bad boy and then um, I'm gonna go so head over and check out the blog hop 
and uh, put your name in the hat to win some wonderful prizes. If you can support small business, that'd be amazing. Um, and that's it. I will see you guys again real soon. Thank you for joining me. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.